pandemic tailwinds, and more. Um, these events are all fundamentally changing the landscape that we operate in, and especially how businesses need to show up on the web, particularly important here on the SaaS Monster stage. So, speaking to Bobby Allen, who's the co-founder of Netlify, and CEO Matt Billman, and Stack Overflow CEO Prashanth Chandrasekhar, we will discuss everything from the supply and demand and imbalances of tech talent, to democratization of code, to the power of immigration, and the state of the web as brands respond to global change. Please join me in welcoming them out. Thank you, everyone. Um, spontaneous or what? Yeah. I met I don't have Bill Mann, CEO and co-founder of Netlify. Um, we are a cloud platform for the web um, that helps developers build, deploy, and operate modern websites. And we are on a mission to make the web the best platform it can be because we believe it's an incredibly important platform. Um, it's the one platform that's a truly open platform that doesn't have an owner and that can't suddenly from one day to the other be bought by anyone. And it's essential to how we communicate online. Um, Netlify, uh, some of you that's developers will know us from creating the category of the Jamstack, a fundamentally new architectural approach to how to build for the web. We've onboarded more than 3 million developers to our platform since we started back in 2015. Uh, and we're reaching close to 1 billion unique visitors to sites and apps and stores running on Netlify every single month. Now, a lot of us felt similar to this when we, when we started uh, entering into 2020, came into it with optimism and hope prepared, to, uh, prepared for a great year. Um, and then, uh, we entered instead into a series of unprecedented times where suddenly a uh, global new virus started sweeping the, the, the planet. We saw caseloads rise. We all got told to go and sit in our homes. We had to fundamentally traverse how to go from working together in physical spaces to do our job remotely. Uh, the web it became even more important. We also went from from a strong economy to suddenly seeing like the strongest market crash we've seen since the Great Depression. Um, and then followed by after having to communicate that to all of our, our team members, replan, uh, go through crisis communication by one of the strongest upturns in, in e-commerce and digital software, one of the fastest series of digital transformations the world has gone through while also changing completely the way we, we had to work. Um, after this whole period of pandemic and everything, I think a lot of us thought, okay, 2022 is going to be different. We're through the pandemic, we're gonna go back to more normal times. Um, but since then, we've been hit by new variants, by soaring gas prices, by war in Ukraine, inflation, economic downturn, and it's only accelerated the pace with which we've had to adapt to change and communicate to our customers and to our employees, investors, and everything. A lot of that communication inherently happens on the web today, and businesses have had to adapt faster than ever to this incredibly fast-changing environment, but you can only adapt as fast as you can actually build for the web and as fast as you can actually get new messages out. Traditionally, the web was built as a series of monolithic applications. If you had a website, it was typically a big application with the web experience layer and the database and everything coupled tightly together. This meant that if you told your developers to use a specific CMS, you had suddenly decided the whole tech stack for them. And this really slows down the pace with which you can actually react and build stuff. We, we've been part of a, of a strong motion towards changing from that approach to a world of composable software and composable, composable architectures, where a lot of the services we're building the web from are turning into APIs like Twilio or Contentful, Shopify and HubSpot, all publishing APIs that we can stitch together to get the functionality we need to bring to our users. And then we've helped companies retool the way they build for the web 
so they can treat the web experience more as a self-standing app and really empower their developers to build fast, ship fast, and, uh, and get things done faster. Um, we, we, we serve thousands of customers across essentially all sectors, building apps, building stores, building websites, and we consistently hear how they are able to build content three times faster, how their conversion rate when engaging with the customers have gone up with up to 137% after going through this transition. Uh, and we've heard companies like Twilio tell us how they went from deploying to production once a week and to releasing 10 times a day. And when you see the scale of change in, fast, in, in front of us, that's the pace you want to be operating on. But to operate on that pace, you have to empower developers. Developers and designers are the ones that actually build and, uh, and create for the web. We can build a lot of tools that serve all the other stakeholders, and all of this should serve marketeers, or e-commerce managers, or product managers. But if we don't empower our developers to take the right decisions and to move fast and to really be creative in the areas where it matters, we're ne never going to be able to build fast enough to keep up with global change. So one of the people that knows a lot about developers, uh, and that's also one of our customers, is uh, Prashant, the CEO of Stack Overflow, um, that runs their, their uh, communication sites on, on Netlify. And I'll invite him onto the stage uh, to share his thoughts with me. Welcome, Prashant. Hopefully you folks can hear me. Thank you for uh, being here and for, uh, for a few minutes. I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an um, intro into Stack for those of you that don't know us. Hopefully any developers and technologists in the audience uh, use us heavily uh, and, and like our product. So very quickly, just to start with our numbers, uh, we are the world's largest software developer community and platform. We serve close to 100 million monthly visitors from all around the world. Uh, we have close to 50 million questions and answers on every possible technology topic from Python to JavaScript to cloud technologies like AWS. Uh, and all of that information has been accessed uh, collectively about 50 billion times since our inception in 2008. Uh, so that's why we're one of the world's most popular websites. Uh, and it's, it's, this is sort of the foundation of the company. That is on the left side of this, as you see. But in addition to that, we have a couple um, additional businesses, uh, which are what we really focus on in addition to our public community. Uh, as a function of being a popular website, we obviously have a, a whole range of advertising-focused products, uh, everything from employer branding to promoting uh, your technology products and creating your sub-communities. But our primary business is a private version of Stack Overflow that companies use within their organizations. Companies like Microsoft have 100,000 users using Stack Overflow for Teams, which is what you see on the right side, to share, collaborate, uh, information and knowledge within their organizations with the much-loved uh, format of Stack Overflow that everybody's, be, that everybody's been using uh, for the past 14 years. And if you think about the core problems that we're trying to solve, it's all about the developer experience, right? And the hiring uh, issue, which is you know, hiring and retention for technology leaders, is, is only becoming worse with the supply-demand imbalance that you see in, in the, sort of the ecosystem today. That's not going away. Uh, executing big transformations like cloud, ML, uh, big data, uh, you, know, you talk about um, uh, DevOps and Agile transformations, all of these things are happening within companies and they need a great way to get everybody to roam in the same direction. And then finally, managing all this in a heavily distributed work environment. Uh, that's a very big challenge for tech leaders today because uh, you know, I'm, very, I'm here to tell you that hybrid work is here to stay. Uh, even though people are going to try and experiment to come back in the office full time, it's not going to stick because a very small group of people are interested in uh, releasing that flexibility that they've experienced through the pandemic. And all of this, from our standpoint, uh, zones in on f providing developers and technologists flexibility on where they can work, when they can work, uh, how they can work. It's about making sure they have uh, great productivity. They're not uh, getting burnt out by answering the same questions over and over again. And finally, it's all around giving them opportunities to learn about new technologies, which is super critical for them to be effective in the future. So that's what we focus on at Stack Overflow, using our public platform as well as our products that I mentioned, Stack Overflow for Teams. Uh, and with that, 
Uh, I'll just sort of end with one small story with Progressive Insurance, one of our customers that uses Stack Overflow for teams to do many of the things I just described by breaking down barriers across the organization and getting a real sense of collaboration and internal community and learning within the company so they can share and learn the latest of what's important in technology so they can build the next generation of applications. So with that, I will now introduce uh, Bobby uh, from NPR to take us through the fireside. Hello, welcome. Uh, all right. So uh, the pandemic was a, a real accelerant in terms of the democratization of code. Um, from the developer standpoint, I'm wondering if you both can sort of talk about that. Yeah, I think, you know, in terms of Stack Overflow, we, we see a lot happening on our website, right? During the pandemic, one of the most interesting accelerants was that we saw a significant leapfrogging of interest in just core technologies like the cloud. So as, as an example, cloud-related questions and answers uh, in the three months post-pandemic accelerated to about four years' worth of questions and answers. So people were not only learning about how to develop using and you know, spin up cloud instances using AWS and Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud, but people that knew AWS were beginning to learn Google Cloud, multi-cloud became a thing, a lot more people were spending time online at home, and so it really leapfrogged people's learning uh, within organizations. And also we saw companies through our Stack Overflow for Team SaaS product approach us and saying they really needed to enable their developers uh, to build the next generation of technology through our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw some amazing examples. So right when the when the lockdown started happening and everybody were, were were stuck at home but still had to start reacting to the to the pandemic and coming together as a community to address it. So one of the inspiring projects we saw saw took place was um, covidtracking.org that was sort of the main information site that, that emerged around following the patterns of the virus and the initiatives to, uh, to meet it, the vaccine efforts and so on. There was really a distributed effort it started by some people at the Atlantic and then picked up by developers and scientists around the world com communicating over the internet, working together through GitHub and Netlify to build this resource for the whole world. Um, and it was also a demonstration around how this kind of technology can allow this kind of group to just go together and build something that immediately is able to reach the whole population of the earth and, and sustain the kind of traffic you get when, when, when all the big media starts covering you and sending, sending people to that kind of right. resource, right? Like, so, I mean, the pandemic was this transition where everyone was just basically with a flip of a switch. We used to go into the office, now we're working from home. I mean, what did that mean in terms of the demand that you guys were, tip, were absolutely being crushed with? I mean, how did you get through that bumpy period? Were there labor shortages? Did you have to add capacity to your servers? Can you talk about how you rode the storm of the pandemic? Because the demand just had to be absolutely crushing. Yeah, I think for the context of our customers, I mean, that was one of the, the biggest issues, and I pointed that out in my, in my slide in terms of challenges. The supply-demand imbalance in technology is massive, irrespective of what you see in terms of you know, uh, people cutting jobs, and you know, that's happening, it's still a global phenomenon, and that's true, but if you compare it to pre-pandemic levels, you still have 200,000 software developer jobs unfilled, <laughs> and just not enough people to do this work. And why is that? Because they're all trying, to, every company has cordoned off a large amount of budget, and CTOs and CIOs and CEOs are saying, listen, this is the time to modernize, and the pandemic, effectively taught us that this is the time for us to really use it as a forcing function. So never let a crisis go to waste, right? So that's really what we saw. A tremendous interest for our SaaS business, for Stack Overflow for Teams, and just in general, a huge uh, interest to advertise or for employer branding to say they want a higher technical talent. And obviously Stack Overflow with 100 million people is a great opportunity for them to showcase uh, their company. Yeah, I think everything that's happened since, since the onset of the pandemic and even now have accelerated the, the general trend of needing to needing more from your developers, right? Like you just can't hire enough developers to, to, to yeah. throw people at the problems. So you need technology to accelerate what your developers can do. And then we saw it accelerate also this whole transition from these big monolithic platforms into this decoupled approach where, where you can really build and deploy the user experience that your customers and, and the people you're communicating to your audiences interact with and get them deployed globally 
um, to be able to, to, to absorb the surges in traffic without again just being able to, having to add massive amounts of servers. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking to a student earlier who's studying to be a coder, wants to be a full stack dev eventually, and was wondering, I mean, what skills should I really focus on in mm -hmm. this market right now? I mean, yeah. do you two have any thoughts about that? Is there any particular language or any technical skills that really can put you sort of, yeah. um, you know, ahead of the pack? Yeah, I think, you know, the macro stat is that 70% of developers are learning a new programming language every year, yeah. right? And if you look at the age group of developers that are, on, you know, that are beginning to write their first line of code, it's between the ages of 11 and 17. So super young audience, it's becoming younger and younger around the world. But in terms of concepts, if you look at a lot of the trends on Stack, it predicts what's going to happen in the future. And we've been tracking, for example, cloud uh, related questions and answers on Stack Overflow have been increasing 50% year over year for the past decade. Machine learning questions and answers have been increasing 50% year over year over the past decade. Blockchain related questions have been really increasing on Stack Overflow 80% year over year for the past decade. And interestingly now, you know, there's obviously all this, you know, the, the kind of the noise around these subjects, and of course all these topics have been around, but those are great places to start. Uh, and our developer survey, Stack Overflow developer survey, is a great way to understand what's going on. And within organizations, uh, obviously, Stack Overflow for Teams promotes uh, learning through sharing uh, with each other. So those are some things, and I would just say, I think if you focus on those three topics, you're in good shape. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of starting with the core fundamentals of the web and the web as a platform, because the web has shown longevity by now, right? It's been around since 92, and it keeps evolving, and as Prashant said, you keep having to learn new languages and new technologies to, to keep up as a developer, right? Like there's no way of being a developer and not being willing to keep expanding your knowledge and, and keep getting better. But it's a, it's a good thing to focus on some of the core pillars that stay the same. And the concepts around the web of, of URLs, of core browser technologies, and so on, those have shown real longevity, and those will keep being core building blocks in the future. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a, a Web Summit panel if I didn't ask about Web3, which has obviously sure. been a hot topic yeah. for years now. I mean, how did the rise of NFTs and other crypto services change your customer base? Yeah. No, I think that there's, if you look at the interest on, about blockchain-related technologies, let's use that word because you know, there's obviously Web3, there's all these other all the elements. Interestingly, you know, it's a very religious topic. You know, if we have actually done a ton of polls. We, you know, we survey close to 100,000 people a year who respond to our surveys uh, through our developer and pulse surveys. Uh, but the growth in things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and all the other sort of topics on Stack Overflow have exploded over the past uh, 10 years. So certainly because of the fundamental building blocks of those things, it's not about a, a topic of whether you believe in these topics or not. The conversation on Stack Overflow is how do you build applications on, the, on this particular platform, Ethereum or whatever it may be. And that is very related to core fundamental Web2 topics like Node.js or JavaScript or Python. So you see a very clear correlation between those topics. So we don't want to have an opinion on what's right or wrong, and we don't want to take a religious side. We just want to enable people to learn and leverage technology through the community. Yeah, yeah I think there's a fundamental vision behind the idea of Web3 that's just in general very aligned with this idea of a web that's not owned by anyone. That's already been true for a long time, but where there is some promise of can we also make the data someone that no one owns, that you can bring different views to, different UIs to, different applications to, and that fits very well into this whole idea of composability and so on. But then at the same time, there's also a lot of the underlying like core innovations, what's real, what's not real, has been masked by this like massive interest in the speculative value of crypto tokens, right? Like, um, the Ethereum Foundation is one of our customers, and I think it's very exciting to see what, what these kind of companies are building in terms of core protocols and building blocks that we can all build on, again, without any single point of ownership uh, and without a platform that, that, that someone can suddenly come and buy and do things with, right? Like, so we're just about running out of time here, but with so much uncertainty right now, with fears of recession, the war in Ukraine, how are both of your companies plowing the path forward? Yeah, I think new austerity measures, like what's happening? Yeah, I think for us it's all about focusing on our mission, which is all about making sure that we help companies and users build technology through shared and collective knowledge. Right? So that's what we want to do. We want to promote a sense of community both on our public platform as well as within organizations, within companies using our SaaS product, Stack Overflow for Teams, and really help the world in many ways break down barriers, enable learning to happen, both initial learning when they start uh, coding as a, as a young person, 
uh, find their first job and uh, through a Stack Overflow, through employer branding, enter their first job, and then once they're there, actually be able to learn from their colleagues uh, through our products, as we've talked about. So we yeah. just, you know, we're focused on our mission, heads down, uh, you know, keeping the noise of the external volatility out, and focus on what we can control, which is the developer experience. Very similar, right? Like, I mean, in general, we're seeing the whole tech industry and, and the whole the, all the world's industries in some way having to focus on, on more efficient growth uh, and on um, doing more with the same people rather than throwing more and more people at the problems to, to hit a high growth curve, right? Like, and that also means that there's more and more of a need for tool that can help people increase their productivity. And for us, that's, a, that's all about how can we help developers do more and, and move faster uh, without just having to work harder, right? Yeah. Yeah, well thanks for your time, thanks for the chat.